Hello everyone. Topic of today's discussion is losses in press tracing. Till now, we have seen the various methods of press tracing and uh, analysis for the top fiber stresses, bottom fiber stresses, uh, for various tendon profile, for various loading conditions, and uh, for various variety of the problems we have seen till uh, till today. Now we have to see uh, what kind of losses will be there. So broadly, we have divided the losses into the short term losses and the long term losses. But what kind of the losses will be there? What will be the reason behind the losses in pre-stress and how uh, we have to count these losses and how we have to overcome these losses? All these topics uh, or we are going to discuss all these points in today's session. So pre-stressing losses. So first of all, we will list out uh, types of losses. Types of losses, first loss will be uh, due to the elastic shortening of concrete. Elasticity is the property of material and every material exhibits this uh, property. Uh, as we can, uh, as you know, that uh, there is no perfectly rigid body exist in uh, this universe. Every body uh, possesses elasticity and by virtue of it, uh, it will undergo some deformation uh, due to the uh, compression. Uh, for example, here uh, we are talking about the concrete. Concrete will go uh, somewhat deformation due to the applied compression. And this deformation will lead to the loss in a strain of a stressed tendon. Another loss is uh, loss due to the creep of concrete. Creep of concrete is a time dependent process. Uh, we can say that uh, creep. creep is what by definition creep uh, it is a deformation under a sustained stress or a sustained loading okay so uh, for a particular load or uh, if a particular load acts over a member for a long time so there will be a somewhat deformation with uh, with respect to time and this deformation uh, or this is called as the creep of a concrete and due to this creep there will be a losses in uh, pre stress also Another one is a loss of a, a loss due to the shrinkage of concrete. Shrinkage is also one other property, and due to this, there will be a loss. Loss due to a relaxation or a creep of steel. Uh, creep, creep also exists for a tendons. There will be a loss uh, due to the creep of steel also, and uh, loss due to the anchor edge slip. Uh, as we have seen in a previous lectures, uh, various anchorage system for the post tension member. One of the most famous uh, anchorage system is Fresnet uh, system, which we have seen in video how it is uh, applied or how it is implanted on a, a member. And uh, there may be a slip, somewhat a small slip. As you know, for example, in case of a Fresnet uh, system of anchoring, there are a conical wedges which fix into a conical uh, shaped, uh, what we can say, plate, end plate, and there will be a somewhat slip. Slip is very minute, but there will be a somewhat slip. It means there will be a relaxation in steel, uh, and due to this, there will be a losses, of course. And last one is a loss due to the friction. Loss due to the friction, this case may happen where the tendons are provided a parabolic or uh, tendons are provided like a bent tendon or of any other shape, uh, uh, the tendons which are passing through a duct or a sheathing. There, there, there may be a friction uh, in, uh, there may be a friction between the uh, duct uh, and uh, tendon and due to this friction there will be a losses in a uh, stresses okay so these are uh, all possibilities of the losses and oh sorry uh, these are all the uh, reasons due to which uh, there will be a losses in initial pre stress one by one of course we we, we are going to deal with these uh, losses uh, so as we have seen uh, these losses are divided into a uh, short term losses and long term losses out of these short term losses are loss due to elastic shortening of concrete loss due to the anchor slip and loss due to the friction uh, these are uh, short term losses which means that these losses happens uh, just after the uh, uh, tension provided to the tenders or you can say these losses happens at the time of transfer itself long term losses are 
loss due to the creep of concrete loss due to the creep of steel okay and loss due to the shrinkage of uh, concrete so as these are the uh, losses which are time dependent it requires some time or it happens uh, with the uh, span of a uh, time so these are uh, termed as a long term losses okay so that there are two types of the uh, or two methods of a uh, pre stressing first one is pre tensioning and second one is uh, post tensioning so uh, in which type of uh, tensioning uh, which losses will occur we will just uh, have a look at it so in pre tensioning elastic deformation of concrete will happen okay in pre tensioning in pre tensioning what happens uh, tensions uh, tendons are tensioned uh, prior the pouring of the concrete or prior the concrete get hardened uh, so that's why uh, at the time of transfer of course this tendon will exert a compressive force on a surrounding concrete and uh, there may be uh, there may be a elastic deformation of the concrete due to which losses will happen but in case of post tensioning as we are tensioning these tendons after the concrete get hardened okay so uh, whatever the reading we are getting on the dial gauge in a post tensioning that reading will be after the elastic shortening of concrete had happened okay after it had happened uh, we will get the uh, uh, that uh, reading okay but there are two cases so as first uh, there will be no loss due to the elastic deformation if all wires or all tendons are tensioned simultaneously okay but if the tendons are tensioned one by one of course there will be a uh, loss in the pressure due to the elastic uh, due to the elastic shortening of the concrete uh, i will give one demo on it just after a few slides today we are going to see by demonstration how there will be a losses uh, due to the uh, if we are going to uh, tension tendons successively okay relaxation of a stress in steel that is uh, creep in steel it may happen in both the case pre tensioning as well as post tensioning uh, shrinkage of a concrete it also happens in both the case pre tensioning as well as post tensioning creep of concrete also happens in both cases pre tensioning as well as post tensioning okay so we have to count all these losses in both both methods pre tensioning as well as post tension then friction losses friction losses only happens in post tension not in pre tensioning because as the tendons are in pre in case of a, a pre tensioned member tendons are tensioned prior the concrete get hard or prior the concrete is poured so there are no chance of a, uh, or there is a no issue of a friction in between a concrete and tender but in case of a post tension beam uh, the cable or a tendons are passes uh, are passing through the uh, duct which may be a parabolic or which may be a bent so of course while tensioning a cable through this duct there the friction may happen between duct and duct wall and tendon so it uh, will results into the uh, losses initial in initial stresses okay and of course i encourage sleep this loss uh, is also happen only in case of post tension member i encourage sleep will not happen in case of pre tensioning okay now elastic shortening of concrete or a, a loss due to the elastic shortening of concrete elastic shortening is the property of a concrete uh, which may uh, due to uh, which the concrete can make it uh, short and slightly due to this property when a compression is applied from the both end of the member okay so in pre tensioning the strands are stressed before the concrete is cast therefore after jacking po po stands for a initial pressing force in a tendon initially applied force in a tendon po has been applied at a level y okay of a cross section the concrete is subjected uh, to the uh, stresses which kind of stresses so of course what is this as you can see here fc 
एफ सी एट डी लेवल वाई ओके वाई वेर द टेंडन और केबल इज प्रोवाइडेड एट दैट लेवल I need to calculate uh, compressive stresses, which will be given by F C, and of course it will be a initial stress by cross area of a cross section minus plus minus plus. Why here I have taken minus plus if the tendon is provided below the neutral axis. Okay, uh, the stress due to the pre-stressing force and its eccentricity, and again plus m by i again um, i into y where m will be the moment due to the dead load. Okay. Dead load and live load. Not here. We are not going to consider a live load, but dead load. Okay. So this will be a uh, compressive stress at the level Y. But at the level of strand Y equals to E. Of course, of course, if we are going to calculate the stresses at the level of strands, then this distance Y is nothing but E. That is the eccentricity. Hence the equation would be like this. That is, P O by A G minus plus P O E square by I G. Okay, so it is nothing but P O E by I into Y. Here Y is kept as E, so it becomes P O E square by I G plus minus M by I into E. So this will this this equation will give us a compressive stress at the level of the tendon. Okay, compressive stress. Now. the concrete at the level of the strand has a strain of at the level of strand concrete has a strain of that is epsilon c uh, if epsilon c denotes the strain in a concrete it is given by stress by modulus of elasticity so fc by ec where e is ec is the modulus of elasticity of concrete and this is by uh, this is this is a general hooke's law okay but since the strand and the surrounding concrete is uh, rigidly bonded with each other okay so strain in we can say that a strain in concrete is nothing but strain in steel or a strain in steel must be equal to the strain in concrete because the concrete and the cable passing uh, through it are rigidly bonded with each other okay so we can say that the loss of the strain in cable must be equal to the compressive strain in concrete okay so just equating the strain in this two material we get that strain in steel that is epsilon c uh, epsilon s must be equal to epsilon c and must be equal to fc by ec okay so although here we are talking about the strain in steel we can give this uh, strain in steel by this expression considering the stresses in concrete at the level of tendon multiplied by uh, sorry divided by modulus of elasticity of concrete okay so this is the equation for the strain as we know that this is the equation for strain so loss of the stress of cable or loss of the stress in cable must be equal to this loss of strain multiplied by modulus of elasticity of a steel that is es as you can see uh, here that is a loss of the strain into es and loss of the strain as we have seen earlier it is nothing but fc by ec and multiplied by es so here i can write rewrite rearrange this equation like es by ec this is the ratio of modulus of elasticity of a steel to modulus of elasticity of a concrete okay which is nothing but modular ratio m and i, I am here denoting a modular ratio by a small m so i got the equation that is a loss of a stress of a cable can ultimately be found by m into fc okay where m is what modular ratio modular ratio that is the ratio of modulus of elasticity of a steel to modulus of elasticity of a concrete and what is fc over here fc is the compressive stresses in concrete at the level of tendon or at the level of steel okay this is fc so in short the losses due to elastic shortening of concrete can be given by this equation that is mfc okay this is applicable when the pre stressing cables are either concentric or placed at a uniform eccentricity okay uh ya to pre stressing cable cross section ke cg se coincide ho raha hai throughout ya 
uh, a processing cable having a uh, uniform eccentricity with respect to the neutral axis. But what if this uh, cable uh, having a varying university along the length of a member or what if the cable is a bent cable means uh, in this case also there will be a varying uni uh, uh, eccentricity throughout the length of the cable. So what, what in such case? Uh, so, so consider this case where the cable is bent cable as you can see. Uh, this is the bent cable, uh, yellow one. Okay, and uh, if I want to, just a minute, as you can see, uh, this uh, tender is coinciding with the CG of the cross section at the support section. So the stresses at top and bottom fiber will be a compressive. We have seen it, and it will be equal to P by A, uh, just like uh, shown here in this uh, uh, diagram. Okay, and similarly, when we come towards the center of the span, so this will be the stress distribution. The stress distribution will be like this, as shown in uh, diagram. Okay, so we can say that uh, at uh, support section, if stresses are equal to F C one, and at the mid of the section, if stresses are equal to F C two. Okay, then uh, what what we have to consider here instead of FC. So here we, we are having a two values of uh, stresses at support and at section. In such case, we need to consider a average value of the stress and average will be given by this where FC will be equals to that is the stress at the uh, um, support that is the FC1 plus Two third of the difference between these two uh, stresses. That is a plus two third of FC2 minus FC1. Okay. So this will be the FC in such case, wherever the tendons are having uh, variation in eccentricity. Okay. So in this way, we need to find the average stresses and put these average stresses in this equation that is MFC and we will get the losses happen due to the elastic shortening of content. Elastic shortening in post tensioning. This is the this is a very interesting uh, topic as we have seen that uh, if the tendons or all cables are tensioned simultaneously then there will be a no loss but if the tendons and cables are tensioned successively that is one by one then there will be a loss due to the elastic shortening of content let us see case one if all cables are tensioned simultaneously as we have discussed losses will be zero and case two in case uh, the tendons are uh, tensioned successively whatever let us see uh, through this figure while tensioning the cable 1, only the cable 1 as you can see in this figure, uh, while tensioning the cable 1 only there will be a no loss uh, due to the elastic shortening of concrete as the reading whatever we will get of a tension in a cable will be after the deduction of uh, or after this elastic shortening happened. So that's why there will be a no loss in a cable 1 but as soon as if we are tensioning a cable 2 losses in cable 1 will be a delta 2 which you can see in this figure so this is a delta 2 and uh, losses when tensioning the cable 3 losses in cable 1 will be uh, due to losses in cable 1 will be due to delta 2 and delta 3 and losses in cable 2 will be due to delta 3 as you can see in the figure so just I am going to explain all this procedure by a simple demo, just uh, focus over this uh, demo. So this is one model uh, to explain uh, the losses uh, which would happen due to the successive tensioning of the cable. So these as you can see consider this is a beam cross section or you can say this is a length of a beam okay say L. And this beam is tension using these three cable or three tendons which are not tensioned right now. Okay. So if I tension the, all these cables simultaneously, as you can see, I have provided a tension 
provided attention simultaneously to these uh, cables so every cable is tensioned with equal amount okay and as you can see these two rods are coming towards each other this is nothing but this depicts the uh, elastic shortening of the concrete uh, so as this comes towards it, just these are depicting what that concrete is getting shortened due to its elasticity so due to its elasticity if concrete is getting shorter due to elasticity if concrete is getting shorter and then uh, whatever uh, the threading whatever reading i am getting in the dial is, is the final uh, stresses and beyond which there will be a no stress happening due to this elastic shot so this will be a final stress in, it. in which case in 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 case if uh, we are uh, tensioning all the cables simultaneously but what happens when we are going to tension these cables one by one so first of all i am going to tension the cable one like this see so i have tensioned the first cable okay so in tensioning first cable there will be a no loss no loss in the stress so cable is a tension now i am going to tension second cable so just look at the first cable if i am providing or somewhat tension in second cable so you can see here cable 2 is tension but cable 1 is not that much tension okay so there is somewhat somewhat uh, loss of stress happen in cable 1 why because the successive tensioning of the cable 2 okay and now if I am going to tension a cable 3 beyond which so you can see so cable number 3 is tension now this is highly tension cable 2 is having some part tension but less uh, less as as before it is having okay now that some means it means that loss in stress happen for cable 2 while tensioning the cable 3 and also a loss in tension happen as you can see in this case this is tension free cable okay so this thing happens same thing happens uh, while tensioning the tendons one by one or successively in post tensioning so in this way there will be a uh, uh, losses due to the post uh, sorry due, due to the uh, successive tension of the tendon but if uh, all the cables are tensioned successively uh, sorry simultaneously then there would be a no losses as you can again see here that all the cables are tensioned equally okay thank you